They said it couldn't be done, that energy can't simply appear from nowhere. But what if they were wrong? What if a small, home-built device could hint at a technology powerful enough to rewrite how we think about energy itself? A few months ago, I decided to put that idea to the test. To build a mini version of the legendary Maxwell Generator, the device many claim can power itself indefinitely. And what I discovered during that experiment shocked me. Some of it thrilled me, and some of it left me questioning everything I thought I knew about electricity. This is a story of five shocking lessons I learned from my DIY Mini Maxwell generator experiment. It all started with a sketch, Maxwell Chikambutso's concept for a self-powered generator. No fuel, no plug, just a clever combination of magnets, coils, and frequency modulation that supposedly created continuous energy. Skeptics called it impossible, but curiosity is stronger than doubt. So, I gathered components, neodymium magnets, copper coils, a pulse circuit, and a small inverter. My goal wasn't to prove or disprove Maxwell's claims. It was to understand the science behind the myth. And once the build began, I quickly realized how much more there was to this technology, TH, and what most people see online. The first thing I discovered was something few tutorials mention— Resonance is everything. When the electromagnetic frequency of the coils match the vibration of the magnetic field, something extraordinary happened. The current stabilized. It wasn't just voltage. It was energy harmony. This moment taught me that the secret behind many impossible devices lies not in defying physics, but in mastering hidden resonance. I adjusted one coil's position by less than a centimeter, and the output changed completely. That's when I realized the Maxwell design is incredibly sensitive. A single wire angle could mean the difference between a dead circuit and a pulse that sustains itself. This wasn't just about electricity. It was about precision, patience, and balance. Energy, I learned, doesn't like chaos. It thrives in order. At one point, my circuit began feeding energy back into itself. The voltage looped. The LED stayed lit even after I disconnected the primary source for a moment. It was an infinite power, but it was close enough to make me pause. Was it capacitor discharge? A magnetic anomaly? Or something deeper? A glimpse of how future self-powered systems could work? Whatever it was, it proved one thing. Feedback is the future of sustainable energy. The generator ran smoothly until it didn't. A tiny spark, a wire overload, and suddenly everything went dark. That moment reminded me how fragile innovation really is. Every breakthrough teeters on the edge between success and failure, and sometimes, what breaks teaches you more than what works. I wasn't discouraged. I was inspired. Because every failed test whispered a secret the working models never reveal. And finally, the fifth lesson, perhaps the most shocking of all, I didn't just build a mini-generator. I built a mindset. A mindset that questions, experiments, and refuses to accept impossible. Maxwell's story isn't about one man's machine. It's about human curiosity pushing beyond the limits of what's known. And in that spirit, maybe we're all Maxwell, searching for that spark that powers the world from within. The mini-generator may have been small, but the lessons it revealed were massive. And who knows? Maybe this tiny experiment is just the first step toward an energy revolution waiting to happen. If you enjoyed this journey, don't forget to like, subscribe and share because the next experiment might just change how we see energy forever after i shut down the generator that night the silence in my workshop felt different it wasn't just quiet it was alive on my desk lay a tangle of copper magnets and burnt circuits but also a question that refused to fade what if maxwell was right just ahead of his time so i didn't stop there i rebuilt i rewired i refined each version brought me closer to something I couldn't fully explain, the faint hum of self-sustaining current. And in that delicate pulse, there was a message. Energy isn't just a force. It's a language. And when you learn how to speak it, it answers back. Over the next few weeks, I began tracking voltage spikes and frequency shifts, and that's when I noticed a strange pattern. Every time the generator entered a state of balance, its electromagnetic field emitted a rhythmic pulse almost like a heartbeat. When I started posting fragments of my results online, something interesting happened. A few engineers reached out, some curious, others skeptical, but one message stood out. It came from a retired electrical researcher in South Africa. 
He said, You're close, but you're not controlling the phase feedback properly. He sent me a sketch, Simple Elegant, showing a small adjustment to the magnetic orientation. I followed it, and for the first time, the generator ran longer than it should have. Was it self-powering? Not entirely but it was enough to blur the line between theory and reality. That breakthrough made me think beyond my workshop. If a small DIY setup could sustain power for even a fraction longer than input energy should allow, imagine what an entire research lab could do with advanced materials, superconductors, and quantum frequency control. We may be standing on the edge of something extraordinary, a new understanding of how energy flows, regenerates, and interacts with the environment. And perhaps that's why so many governments and corporations are quietly watching innovators like Maxwell and anyone who dares to replicate him. Because whoever truly masters this field won't just change the auto industry or home power systems. They'll redefine civilization itself. Today, my mini generator sits on a shelf, quiet, modest, yet symbolic. It's not perfect. It doesn't run forever. But it represents something much greater, a glimpse into a future power by human curiosity rather than fossil fuels. And every time I look at it, I'm reminded of this. Innovation doesn't begin with answers. It begins with questions, the kind that make you stay up at night, chasing invisible energy in the dark. The real power is in the machine. It's in the mind that dares to build it. I documented everything. Every voltage rise every fluctuation, every anomaly that didn't make sense. I realized that my little prototype wasn't just an isolated system. It was responding to something around it. At first, I thought it was interference from my workshop's wiring or the metal structures nearby. But even after isolating the setup in a shielded enclosure, faint signals still pulsed through the coils, almost like an echo of the Earth's own heartbeat. It was then that I started comparing the generator's frequency readings to naturally occurring electromagnetic fields. The correlation was startling. Whenever the ambient Schumann resonance, that subtle electromagnetic frequency surrounding the planet, intensified, my generator responded with a gentle surge, as if synchronizing with it. The realization hit me hard. Whether this device wasn't creating power out of nothing, but rather channeling energy from the environment in a way our instruments barely understood, the more I tested, the clearer the pattern became. Adjusting coil orientation changed the way it interacted with surrounding fields. Over the following days, strange things began to happen. My online uploads, videos, charts, even written notes, started disappearing from a forum. Links broke, posts vanished, and a few members I had interacted with were suddenly silent. One of them, who used to be quite active, sent me a final message before his account went dark. They're watching now. Be careful what you share. That night, I unplugged the generator and stored it in a shielded box. But sleep didn't come easily. The faint sound of the coil's resonance, that soft, haunting um, seemed to linger in my mind like an unfinished melody. I knew I couldn't stop now. Not after coming this far. Somewhere, deep within the physics of that small device, was a secret humanity had been circling for decades. I decided then that the next step would be different. No more small-scale experiments. No more isolated builds. If this technology was real, if it truly tapped into a hidden layer of ambient power, it needed to be studied, verified, and shared with those who could understand its full potential. But I also knew the moment I tried, I'd be stepping into a world of competing interests, governments, corporations, and private labs, all chasing control over the same invisible force. For the next few weeks... My workshop became more like a secret lab. Every window was covered. Every surface meticulously organized. I worked mostly at night, when the world outside was asleep, when a hum of the city was replaced by silence, the perfect atmosphere to listen to the subtle frequencies that whispered through the coils. I had salvaged new materials from old devices, higher-grade ferrite cores, precision capacitors, and custom wound copper wire I ordered under a different name. The goal was no longer to test a theory. It was to prove that energy, in its purest form, could be persuaded to flow without the rules we thought were absolute. As I assembled the new prototype, I realized how far I drifted from where I began. This wasn't just science anymore. It felt almost like uncovering a forgotten language. Every pulse, every waveform carried meaning. And if I could align them just right, 
The device seemed to respond as if alive. The generator had grown. A compact, beautiful fusion of copper and magnetic steel, silent yet full of potential. I called it model. 3R, a nod to its principle of resonant recovery. On the night of the first major test, the air felt charged, thick, expectant. I powered up the initial pulse circuit, watching the oscillations appear on my monitor. Smooth, symmetrical, flawless. Then, as the frequency climbed into the harmonic range, a strange vibration began to ripple through the metal table. It wasn't mechanical. It was field resonance, the kind you feel in your bones rather than hear. The LED flickered once, then stabilized brighter than before. I monitored everything. Voltage, magnetic flux, temperature, every metric was steady. For nearly 12 minutes, the system maintained its output after I cut the external supply. The current looped through itself, oscillating in perfect balance, drawing from something unseen. It wasn't infinite energy, but it was undeniably self-sustaining. I sat frozen, mesmerized by the soft pulse of light, that refused to die. It was as though the device had found its rhythm with the Earth's own heartbeat. Then the hum deepened. My instruments flickered. The reading spiked erratically. For a moment, the lights of my workshop dimmed, and the faint smell of ozone filled the air. I reached the kill switch, but the generator was still glowing, still resonating. I could feel the pressure in the air, like standing near a thunderstorm moments before lightning strikes. My heart pounded as I disconnected the last circuit line manually, and the hum faded, leaving a heavy, electric silence behind. When it was over, I sat there for a long time, staring at the faintly warm coil. I replayed the footage again and again. The readings were real, undeniable. Something in that 12-minute window had changed the way the device interacted with its surroundings. The next day, I analyzed the data, searching for the anomaly. The frequencies that had stabilized that didn't match any known harmonic patterns. They were off-grid, oscillating at ratios that mirrored fractal resonance found in nature. That discovery sent chills through me. It meant the generator wasn't just reducing energy. It was syncing with the natural electromagnetic architecture of our planet. And that realization was both thrilling and terrifying. If such synchronization could be scaled up, it could power cities but it could also destabilize entire energy networks. I decided to keep this data offline. No cloud backups, no online notes, just encrypted drives hidden inside a locked cabinet. Yet, even with all precautions, strange things started happening again. My Wi-Fi router began resetting on its own. My phone received silent calls at the end of the moment I answered, and a black SUV parked across the street for two nights in a row without moving. Maybe it was coincidence. Maybe not, but one thing was certain. I was no longer just experimenting with coils and magnets. I had crossed into a space that few dare to enter, the boundary between science and something far greater. And once you touch that edge, you can't go back. So I began planning the next phase. Not in this workshop, not here. Somewhere remote, quiet, shielded from interference, where the next version, the one that could sustain itself indefinitely, could come alive. I left the city under the cover of night, with only a backpack, a few hard drives, and the heart of the model, three are generator wrapped carefully in insulating foam. I drove until there were no more lights, just a long, dark stretch of road cutting through empty plains. My destination was an abandoned farmhouse on the edge of Forgotten Valley, quiet, isolated, and shielded by miles of open land. It was a perfect place to finish what I'd started. Inside that dusty, silent building. I set up the generator one last time. The night air was still heavy with anticipation. Every component was checked twice, every circuit sealed. I had modified the design, subtle changes in coil geometry, harmonic balancing and grounding. This time, I wasn't just testing resonance. I was searching for connection. When I powered it up, the reaction was immediate. The hum was deeper, smoother, almost melodic. My meters began to rise, slow at first, then steady, then exponential. I could feel the air vibrating, not violently, but rhythmically, like the earth itself was responding. Outside, the wind stirred without warning, carrying an energy that made the air taste metallic. The LED flared to life, brilliant and unwavering. I switched off the external input. The hum didn't stop. The light didn't fade. The generator stood there, alive self-sustaining, 
pulsing in perfect resonance. My instruments couldn't keep up with the readings. The waveform displays froze, yet the physical indicators showed power still flowing. It was as though the generator had connected to something bigger, something limitless. And then it happened. Every compass, every device within reach began to drift. The magnetic field in the room was shifting. The entire structure groaned softly, as though reacting to an unseen pressure. I felt the ground vibrate beneath my feet, subtle but real. The generator's hum evolved into a steady, resonant tone that seemed to come from everywhere at once. It wasn't loud, but it filled the space completely.